Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another Daily Drop here on TarHillIllustrated.com. I'm THI publisher Andrew Jones, and the topic today is Carolina football, the transfer portal, gone, and back again. Jacoby Criswell, before I dive into that, very quick reminder, for $8.33 a month, you can have a one-year subscription to TarHillIllustrated.com, and it gives you inside information to all kinds of Carolina football basketball stuff, plus recruiting, the portal. I got a nice note about Criswell on the portal today. David Sisk was in Memphis this past weekend and talked to some of the top high school basketball players in the country in the class of 2025 who are being targeted by North Carolina. And those interviews can only be seen read because we don't run the video. We just run the transcript. If you are a premium subscriber, ton of stuff going on over there. Plus the community is outstanding. It's growing fast and it's a great place for Carolina fans to hang out. Passionate Carolina fans to hang out. All right. Jacoby Criswell spent three years in Chapel Hill, left to Arkansas, and now he's back. So what happened here? Well, first of all, Jacoby saw the writing on the wall. He wasn't going to get on the field a whole lot because Drake May was the guy. So he went to Arkansas, thought he had a chance there, ended up being third string at Arkansas. He attempted 27 passes last year. I'll get into some numbers here in a minute. And entered the portal here recently. And when he did, I thought it was interesting that, you know, here's a guy that's going to look for a third school because we see a lot more of that now than than I thought we were going to see. I thought maybe guys would just transfer quicker and then stay there. But no, guys are moving around. So what, what, what the deal here is simple. He graduated from Arkansas. He actually didn't graduate from UNC. We th- he was on a plan for three years, but didn't quite do it. So he did get his degree from Arkansas. He's going back to Carolina. He has two years of eligibility remaining, even though he's been in college now for four football seasons. The reason is he gets a COVID year, point twenty. Then the next year, he played four games. So he gets to re- use that as a red shirt. And then his third year at Carolina was technically a red shirt freshman year. And then his one year in Arkansas was technically a sophomore year from a football standpoint. So he's got two years of eligibility remaining at Carolina, and he wants to get a master's degree from Chapel Hill. I talked to a couple of sources very close to the situation, and the master's degree from Carolina is very important. Jacoby was a great student in high school. He was, I believe, if he was a valedictorian, he was close. I know Connor Harrell was valedictorian. And academics are very important to him. So one of the big decisions here was getting that master's from UNC. Another thing is familiarity with the program and the people. Much of the same staff is still in place. Uh, He'll have a new quarterback's coach, but he'll adapt. And the offense is fairly similar. Connor Harrell, by the way, was behind Criswell in the 2022 season, serving as the understudy. Now Criswell will start behind Connor. I'll get into that in a minute as well. So he's got two years left. He comes into Carolina with an opportunity to be a part of the program that he that he enjoyed being. He reached out to some of the current players that are still on the team that he knows, talked to them about possibly coming back. It, it, it sort of got the wheels rolling a little bit. Tad Hudson transferred to Coastal Carolina, which he announced earlier this week, and that opened up a fourth quarterback spot. They only had three scholarship ones. you got to have at least four. And Max said, ideally, you could even have five. And next year, by the way, they may well have five because Bryce Baker will come in in 2025 as a freshman. Criswell could still be there because he has two years left. Harrell could still be there. And Max Johnson also has two years of eligibility remaining. He could still be around as well. So wants the education and wants to be in a familiar program where he knows a lot of people where he enjoyed it. He only left because he thought he could be a starter somewhere else. Now, does he think he could be the starter in Chapel Hill? Probably deep down, most guys think they can and should be in all positions, but a lot of them also have perspective and recognize who's in front of them. Like, which was the case when Jacoby left the first time, he knew he wasn't going to leapfrog Drake. Now it's a little different because Connor Harrell has less experience than Jacoby does. Max Johnson has a lot of experience, but, but to modest success and neither look great in the spring. I think there were a lot of good things about how they looked in the spring and the staff 
clearly is, is confident rolling forward with the two of them. We talked about possibly going out and getting somebody that could come in and challenge for a starting job. I'm not sure that they did that. Even though Jacoby battled Drake a couple of years ago, those are the words for the program. And I, I don't know if Jacoby's going to walk in right now and say, okay, guys, this is a three-man battle. And that's the thing. I'm told that he has accepted a role as a reserve. Now, if he happens to show up and tears it apart and is outstanding and demands more reps with the blue with the uh, blue team, then he'll get that. And particularly, that would also mean that Harold and Max Johnson are not playing at the level the staff wants them to. But everything that I'm told is that Criswell has accepted a reserve role. What he does, he gives them a third quarterback they could put on the field. I don't think they could put Mike Murdinger on the field this season. And if that's your third string quarterback, that's dangerous because a lot of programs go through, have a season or two every once in a while where they have to go to a third quarterback. Carolina has done that in the past as well. So now with Criswell as your third quarterback, there's a little bit of comfort. The staff can move forward. The offense doesn't have to be any different for Criswell than it is for the other two. He's kind of a hybrid of the two. He's not the speed guy that Connor is, but he's maybe he's got a hell of an arm. He's told us a story about a year and a half ago, two years ago, how he could throw the ball 80 yards on a dime, basically. So he's got a strong arm. I think he could sort of be a little bit of both. So you can run the playbook with him if something happens with Harrell and Max Johnson. A couple of numbers I want to throw at you very quickly. In three seasons at Carolina, he played in 14 games. He was 18 for 31, 204 yards, a TD, and an interception. Last year at Arkansas, 17 for 27. So he threw 27 passes, 177 yards, three touchdowns. And in four years, he's run the ball 43 times for 177 yards and a score. So he's got a little bit of experience. What is that? He's got 58 college passes. It's not a lot, but he's been in the college environment. So if you're going to go into this season and your third quarterback is a guy who's thrown 58 passes, two different programs, he's in his fifth year, he's incredibly smart, he's a team guy, and he's there for the right reasons, that's not a bad thing to have. I personally think, given what they were trying to do in the portal, this is a win-win. It's a win for Criswell because he goes back somewhere where he loved being, and he gets to get a master's from the place where he wanted to get his undergrad degree. For Carolina, they weren't going to find someone who didn't know the program, and they didn't know, someone who would maybe young enough, they come in, they could give Bryce Baker a reason to think, about other options, they weren't going to do anything like that. So it's almost very convenient that all of this worked out the way that it did. Very convenient with the timing, and Criswell had a need, Carolina had a need, and it was a perfect fit. We'll see. We're going to watch practice when camp opens, fall camp opens, either at the end of July, early August. Their opener is August 28th at Minnesota, so they might have their first practice the last day or two of July. They did that a couple of years ago when they opened at the end of August, I believe against uh, Florida A&M. So we'll see. I'm looking forward to it. That's going to be interesting to see if Jacoby can make a push. And if not, Carolina fans, you've got a third quarterback. Maybe none of these guys are gangbusters yet, but you've got a third quarterback and a lot of clubs don't have that. And now Carolina does, and they have a fourth quarterback in Murdinger. So they've got four guys on scholarship, they have what they need moving forward, and the staff can now focus on other things. Let me know what you think about Jacoby Criswell coming back. Do you think he could challenge for the starting job? Let me know. Let me know on Facebook. Let me know on Twitter. Let me know on our message on our message boards at TarHillIllustrated.com. If you're excited that he's back, if you think that this is a solid pickup given the circumstances, go ahead and click like on this video. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Tell your friends we're here. Not enough Tar Heel fans know we exist. We need more of them to know. Any passionate Carolina fans you know, send them over to our channel and then send them over to TarHeelIllustrated.com for just $8.33 a month for one year subscription. They can be Tar Heel insiders too. And a little, little note here, guys, same price for the last 10 years. I just went to the market. 
thin chicken breast was like six dollars for a pack three years ago, and now it's almost ten dollars. We haven't gone up in price. Everything else has. And that should that's good enough. That should be good enough for you guys to say, you know what? I'm gonna hop on board. These guys aren't raising their price. Everybody else did is. We're going to go ahead and support THI so we can bring you more of this outstanding content. Also, make sure you hit the notification bell on our channel so you get updates every time we upload, which is often even in the offseason. We don't stop, guys. We're going to keep pumping out content every day, podcast most days between now and when football starts back up again. I'm AJ, and I appreciate you stopping by.